diet or we're going to talk about okay about the authority of the parents Ooh. yesterday we started to talk about that the parents are not friends after all their authority And let's see where is the mistake. So in the past, many, many generations, the Goim, the Goim, I'm saying, they, They took their children, you know, their, their behavior told that the children was, you are our private property. We can do with you whatever we want. So actually the children of the going, they suffered because their parents used them. Even they sold them to be slaves. Nobody started to think that they have also emotions. It was not even on the agenda, right? Totally to the other side. You're a child, you have nothing to say, okay? You're under, you're under our control and we'll do with you whatever we want to do. And you have nothing to say. And if we want, we can sell you even to be a slave. That's what it used to be. Until the world got himself into revolution. Everything turned upside down. So the society took a turn, a right turn now. So all kind of organization came out that they wanted to redeem the child from, inj from injustice that they were done to them. And they succeeded. So now they took the child from all the way, from all the way to be even a slave to the other side. A child is a human being. Yeah. And you cannot be cruel to him. You cannot be mean. So now they, according to them, they need justice to the kids. <laughs> so, so now, Here come now when you started with this, so it go one step forward. So now it came out that the child became the center of the family.
And this kind of approach, they thought that they saving the whole society. The child had to be on top of the list. Why? It makes sense. Because the kids, after all, they are the future. Yes? So if they are the futures, so we have to, so they are the center of the show. And this, a new, a new religion came to the world. A new religion gave birth. That they see that the, the child, a very, on the top of the values of this world, is a child. It's like became like the holy cow. <clears throat> so every country right? Every country came up with the rights of the children. Yes? Don't, don't we see it now? Huh? Children rights. So there are laws to protect the children. Okay. On his respect, the freedom of the child, So now, what happened? The people who are supporting this kind of a school, that the child is the most important one. So now we, the parents, <clears throat> became responsible that the child will have space, as we say. And the parents became what? Instead of being a parent, you becoming a provider. So we have to what? To supply their needs. So now, now here comes the social workers and the psychologists and everybody else to satisfy this child. So where are the parents in all this deal? Are they authority or they became a suppliers? What are they? Suppliers. So our job became to worry about the happiness of the child. Whatever makes him happy, though. So we're not dealing with chinuch anymore. <laughs> From 
a mechamer, you became a supplier, a provider. So now, the ones who are holding from this kind of a school, they say, has shalom to scream at the child, yes? And if you're screaming at your child, yes, you fail. You fail. And we're saying to the kids, and they say, I'm not a policeman. Meaning, I'm not the authority. We, we went from one extreme to a different extreme. Is this what Hashem meant? Is the parents have to be authority? So now, I said, child needs freedom. And we're giving the child whatever he wants to. When I'm talking, people going to, to Miami in a winter break, and if not, how can you say no? That makes the child happy. Where is the authority? On the other hand, you're losing your authority. Why? Because the child says, I'll ask, you have to supply. They say the parents where they want to go. It cannot be. This is deeply wrong. And they say, here is what they say. Why are you limiting the child? Let them be exposed. Let them explore the world, right? So it will be always curious. It will help him for the future. It will be loose. And it will help them to be creative. This is where we act today exactly. So, I have a question. I have a question, and I need a good answer. <laughs> if the method is so good, why we don't see any success? If all the psychologists and the therapists and everybody that involved, if they believe that this is the right way 
to raise a child, why is such a mess? Rob, it's not, um, it's not right, but what I want to say is, in my experience, I saw the wealthier the people were, the more damage was done to the children. And I saw like all the millionaires in Greenwich, Connecticut. And when I went to their homes, they all said to me, my kid is on drugs. And one grandmother said to me that all my grandchildren are drug addicts. You know, they're living in man, they gave the children like, uh, I remember, I remember one time coming into a home, like a very big home, <laughs> and they had, they had all the skis in the living room. <laughs> I never saw anything like that. They just came from a trip. I, I, the way, the, the affluence for the children, and then everybody, it's Disney World, everybody followed Disney World. Rabbi, shouldn't the parents set the parameters of how we're supposed to behave? That's getting lost. My question was, you give the child freedom. Too much freedom. We no. have to supply what they want. Take them. Why they deserve. And many parents said, I didn't have it. I want my child to have it. But you know, you know normal than your child. Right. It goes, it goes to the Torah, the uh, bread of shame, the bread of shame that you get everything for free. You don't have any purpose. The child has no purpose. No. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Too much freedom. Too much. Yeah. Too much easy. Too much everything. Too and much the parents lost the control over the children. Yeah. The children think they can do whatever they want. Don't tell me what to do. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm my own person. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like we don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It actually sounds familiar because that's what we tell Hashem. So all these people that we call uh, free, they're not in the box. They're not in that. Where are they? They're lost. Totally lost. Totally. On the streets. Yeah. Draggies. Yeah. They've lost their way. No responsibility, no clue. No. Yeah. Yeah. They're not grown up. If you were grown up, you would have a direction. So from being the old school is keep quiet, you have nothing to say. <laughs> If we want, we can sell you to be a slave to the other extreme. Too much. The other one. Let the child do whatever he want. Take him here, take him there. You have to make him happy. You have to do this. You have to do that. Meaning you're not a parent. Yep. You're a supplier. Right. What's become? Two different approaches, extremes. Where is the Torah? Where is it? What Hashem wants? Yep. How many cases cases of violence? Shooting, guns, all kind of crazy stuff. We never heard things like this before. And even self-discipline they don't have.
the kids of today, they don't have self-discipline. Because everything I want, you have to give me. So now, these kids made us, the parents, victims. Because they running the show and we lost the authority and it doesn't work. This method does not work. And I'm ready to, to debate with any educator that they're out there. If the shita, if, the, if this way it's so good, why we don't see it? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. So what is the true Chinuch? What is Chinuch according to the Torah? Without any new ideas that came to the world. What is a real Chinuch? If you go and you read with depth in the sources of the Torah, the Torah reacting toward the child, yes, in a different way than what we said until now. What is the position in the child in the family? Where it belongs? The Torah don't give the child the privilege to demand. This has to be erased from, from the book. You cannot demand. Today, the children are asking you, they say, maybe we can help, or they're demanding. They're demanding. Against the Torah. <clears throat> yeah. Even if you search in the whole Torah, you will not find declaration of the, the children's rights. Can you find it? No. If you do, please. Give me a call. The Torah says yes, the parents has obligations. What? <clears throat> we have we obligated. We obligated through the Torah to teach Torah the child. to marry him and to teach him a profession that he cannot, that he can have Parnasa, what to provide to the family to be that he gonna have. That's it. Other than that, you're not obligated in nothing.
Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, to teach him Torah, to help him marry, and to help him get a job. And what else? Torah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. There were two more. I remember that this, the swimming is now. Okay. Now, yeah. now it's not Shayach. It's not Shayach anymore. No. The Pediona Ben and the Brit Mila. Meaning mm -hmm. the child. Yes. Yes, we want him to have space and this, but it's not an obligation. The child cannot demand it. As a father, as authority, yes, I want. If I can do it, so I'll put my child in his room, maybe with another brother, you know, I'll give him some space, everything else. But that's coming from me. You cannot demand. Do you see where is the difference? Yes. The child cannot ask that I want my own room. You mean? That's it. When the authority will decide, he can do it. You cannot demand. Court of question. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's say your your child is prescribed for the glasses. What, you go what? to let's say <clears throat> let's say your your child needs glasses. <clears throat> now you went to the ophthalmologist to choose the frame. You you choosing the frame from the child, and the child is not satisfied with the your choice. The child says, "I want to choose my own because I'm the one who's wearing glasses." What are you gonna do? What are you gonna say to this in this situation? So before you go in the club. We have to talk to the child. We can, we know we have to buy you glasses. This is the amount that we can spend. It's not in terms of the money. It's in terms of the shape of the glasses, how the frame is. It's all about the frame. The child oh. says, I'm the one who's wearing glasses. So isn't it supposed to be that I have to choose? I want this frame. Is that what you says? It's like this, no. it's like this. A child says, this is something I want. That's what he want? Okay, good. But again, my job is to buy him the glasses. No, but doesn't, my question is, doesn't this consider to be a demand also? Because no. the child says, I'm wearing it. No. So I need to choose. This is not a demand, no. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, demand is he wants to buy sunglasses. It's cool. I don't want to buy it for you. And you cannot demand because it's not it's not necessity. The necessity have I have obligation if he's obligated to to give it to his kids but to come to demand you have to take us to Miami and parents they don't see it as a crisis what do they feel We are happy because the kids are happy. That's not good.
Abba, ideal father, what the Torah says, he is authority. He wants to see the good of the child because that's what Hashem gave him as a job. Because this is his job. Not because he has to surrender to his child requests and demands. He has to do it on his own to supply the kids whatever the child needs, the necessity that he needs. If Abba feels that the child needs a room by himself, and the child didn't ask for them. Abba wants to, okay. Okay. But it's coming from the authority. You don't demand. And the Torah give a lot of chizuk, a strength, support to the position of Abba in the family. That's why we have so many mitzvot, kibbut av ba'em, And I have a Dessler in the book, Mikhtav Meliyahu, he writes, that the authority of Abba in the house is like authority of the king, of a king in his kingdom. Today, it sounds like Chinese today. Which Abba over here can say that in his house he feels as a king? Ah? Huh? Can we say it? No, right? So, if a king will decide to punish someone, right? Is the other one, is the one that got punished from the king. He said, I'm gonna take revenge from, from, from the king. One day I'll do something. Can you do it? It's not even coming to his mind. He will accept that he says he is the king. What can I do? And he says, next to the king, you cannot. He is the authority. So if a child will get into his oh, that Abba is the authority, Ima is the authority, and I have to obey So every home will stay strong
only if the foundation are, is very strong. How? It starts from respecting your father and your mother. When this is not there, nothing is there. Nothing. So there is no chinuch. And today we mixed education with chinuch and everything else. Wrong, wrong. I see the people very well educated. But according to, to the Torah, there are animals on two feet. What good are this? What good are this? No respect, no boundaries. And the Torah says, you cannot use your child, meaning don't abuse your authority. If you're using your authority because you want your children to serve you and do this and do that, it says, No. One thing you have to understand, I don't care where you learn about it, there is no no method like what the Torah is giving us. That's the plan of Hashem. That's what Hashem wants, and everybody else has to excuse us. With all the education that they have, good. We can take some parts over here and to, but the main thing is, is to bring home authority and respect to the authority. So now, if the, if the parents are so good and they implement authority, yes, <clears throat> is the child will have difficulty to submit himself to the authority of Hashem? Today, kids, They don't want to do this, they don't want to do this, I don't want to put a seat, I don't want to put this. What? They don't want to. Where is it coming from? Because they don't want authority. They didn't see their parents putting this it differently also. So then you cannot ask anything from, from the child. I'm not talking about this, you know. When a, a child knows how to submit himself 
to the parents. He knows they are in charge. And he respect them. It's very easy to transmit it to Irat Shamayim. He will be a vessel of acceptance. Because we're going to tell him, your parents, it's authority here. Hashem is the authority of the whole world. So for sure you have to listen, and he will listen. You know, listen to this. When we were in the in, in Shiva, you know, small kids, nine, ten. We were asking the Rebbe, why we have to do it? He said, why? Because Hashem said. The authority says. In our time, they said, no, this is no good. You have to explain the child. He has to sit well in his mind. You know? Why? Because he doesn't want to accept authority. If he sits well with him, he will accept it. If he doesn't sit well, he said, not for me. This is not for me. Meaning by this, he's showing us, I don't accept authority unless it makes sense. Imagine me as a captain on the, the, on the field saying to my soldiers, we have to attack. And a soldier comes and says, why? You know what I'm going to tell him? Because I said. And here comes the professor and said, no, you cannot do it. You have to explain why we want to attack. Why you decided now, why not in another two hours? Do I have to explain you now? So everything now, we have to explain exactly why Hashem said this, why Hashem said this in the generations before. Did he ask any questions? All the questions we're asking in the yeshiva. When we're learning a Gemara, yes? Okay, fine. That's the place. What does it mean, mitzvot ase? What's a mitzvot ase? Who knows? This is the mitzvah? A mitzvot ase. It's what according to Torah, no? It's what? Put on tefillin, for example. Oh, positive comment. So here comes a wise guy. He said, why should I put these boxes on myself? What are you going to answer? That's the commandment. In the Torah. So now, if he, wants, if he knows how to accept authority, so he says, okay. That's what we do. That's what we do. If he doesn't want authority, he says, why should I do it? <coughs> it looks 
weird. Então, you put a box over here, a box over there. It's not stylish. This is all excuses. What's behind it? No authority for me. So, it's such a balagan. How can we let it go? That's my question. How can we let it go? So now, if the parents will tell their child, because Hashem said, Depends where the child is holding, where the house is holding. Abba, every time he's saying something to the children to do, does he have to explain himself? The moment that you start to explain, you are not authority. Authority is you follow instructions without asking any questions. I know that it sounds, but this is what Hashem wants. What does it mean? Tamim tiyei Hashem elokecha. What does it mean? What does the word tamim? For shoot, simple. Innocent. Innocent. Mm -hmm. I've been told to do, I do it. Well. It's mamash astonishing to see how fast the parents lost the control, lost the authority, they lost it. And the parents, they did it to themselves because they are obligated to implement authority. This is one of the main things in Chinuch. In the old days, right? The older ones over here will tell you. The parents always had in their mind, how can they channel that the child, meaning with their authority, yeah, how can we, he says, to show you the way, how we can limit you from doing this, doing that, so you should stay on the path. It always was the, the question of, of Chinuch. 
where to right limited the child you cannot go there you cannot go here this no this yes right today when the parents do that they feel we are failure we forcing the child we forcing him maybe we mistaking maybe we should give him some uh, uh, you know no the parents are afraid maybe we're not going to raise the child in a good way and they afraid maybe the children will not love them anymore because they too strict yes aren't we afraid of it yes rabbi it's true so the parents they let their children do whatever they want the kids love their parents no no not at all they're laughing at them this fear maybe my child will hate me maybe my child will not love me let me give him what he wants so this way we're gonna get closer to It's all mistake. It creates parents which are very hesitant and weak. Imagine a captain in the army hesitant and weak. Can you win a, a war? Is the soldier going to appreciate him before? Zilch. In my own eyes, I saw, in my own eyes, people that in the army, they were hating the general that says he's too tough, he's, he has a heart of a stone, but he was authority. When they finish the three years, huh? they came to the general and they bought him such a gift and said, you made us people. You are authority and you knew exactly what to do. Huh? We got so matured And in Mamash, they will appreciate them. And parents should know, if you set up the boundaries and you have to set boundaries. Of course, the boundaries have to make sense. But we didn't set a boundary if the child is not allowed to demand. demands we're not gonna we're not gonna hear you you can ask us let's take something the child say I want a phone this you're gonna get no phone If the child comes and says, "Can I have a phone?" I'll talk to Emma and we'll see. So 
but today, what do I hear? If you're not gonna give me a phone, I'm gonna do it behind your back. What? What does he have such guts? To authority, you're not gonna talk like that. When a child starts to talk to you this way, you know that you're not authority. Parents, you have to wake up. You have to wake up. Hashem gave you a job. And your main job is to show authority at home. You can be nice, you can smile, you can do, but when I say something, Zehu. Rabbi, can I ask something? Yeah, yeah. What if a child wants an iPhone instead of the flip phone? And um, is he asking or is he demanding? He's kind of, um, I wouldn't say demanding, but comparing to like um, everyone else in his school or his classroom, had, they have more um, of updated phones as iPhones. He's kind of telling me that, you know, everybody's laughing at him and uh, he wants the better phone. The iPhone. Why are you sending him to such yeshiva, if I may ask? I'm sending him to Sheret Zion, Rabbi. Uh -huh. So I'm sure you approve of that. I am, but I don't approve the phones. I agree with you. That's what the parents are giving to their children, the iPhone. So it's the parents, it's not the school. So and we're the blaming the school. No, I'm not blaming don't the do it. The yeshiva says don't do it. And the parents behind the back of the yeshiva, they're doing it. Right, but the thing is that... So we're that not they, working together? No, we're not. No, I wish the parents wouldn't give every, you know, their child the iPhones. No. So because now I have to compete against these parents and uh, the children who are making fun of my child, you know, and now I have to like, it's, it puts me in a position, what should I do with my child? And my child is like, I don't want to have a flip phone. And now he goes out, he comes home by himself, so I have to give him a phone. It's not like I, I cannot give him a phone. Okay, give him a, a flip phone. He doesn't want it. Is that a demand that he doesn't oh. want it? I'll say, you know what? I'll talk to the principal if he says okay. If he say okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. And what if I give him an iPhone without internet and I, I make it a kosher phone? You have to ask the yeshiva if it's okay or not. The parents have to understand once and for all. You cannot work against the yeshiva and then say why the yeshiva is not doing a good job. You not doing a good job. It's easier to blame the yeshiva. So I have to ask the principal. So now we have Two challenges, the kids and the parents. True, very true. Okay. And it's all about competition. Okay. Very difficult, you know. 
I will change the name. I'll call it hospital. Hospital? Hospital. Welcome to Sharetzion Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you want to put it this way, yeah. Yes. And sometimes the parents have to get also into the hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, I cannot speak for other parents, but I wish they would think about it themselves because it's really difficult for the other parents to compete. They think if they're going to surrender or to submit to the child, they're going to have a peace of mind. They're not. Right, right. And they're not authority. Yeah, it doesn't show authority, I know. No. So that's so what we have to deal with. They in and they out. Yes, it's very hard. So I have to uh, argue with my child that I don't want to give you a phone. You tell your child, I put you in the yeshiva. I'm working with the yeshiva. What your friends are doing is not my problem. It's their parents' problem. And what if they're laughing at the child, at, at my child? So he should, he should learn how to deal with pressure. It's not easy. Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> yes, it's not easy. But at least you show the child, I'm not going to do things behind the shiva's back. Okay, I'm gonna speak to the principal about it. Yes. Thank and the you. principal should call the child and tell him. And if I was there, I said, all the kids that have iPhones, bring the parents over. Right. Well, maybe when next time you go there, you could speak to the principal, you know, about this. I can, I can call him. Uh, right after the class. You could like uh, implement that everyone should have same kind of a phones at least. Kosher phones. Yes. And the yeshiva should say, if we'll catch a boy in a phone, right? He can stay home. Right, they don't allow the phones um, only after school. They cannot have it during the class. Or like they, they could have this, the, the phones after the school ends. Which phones? Oh, whatever, I don't know, whatever phones, um, it has to be a kosher phone that is um, filtered. Okay. Okay, I will uh, look into it, thank you. All this is coming from one thing. The parents are not authority. Very true. Okay, thank you. Um, Rabbi, also I've seen like in some that they forced the religion to the kids and the kids didn't like it after a while. It was hard for them to keep Shabbat. They were against it. But I've seen in families that they didn't force it, but the kids came out like loving the dad, keeping Shabbat with no pressure. So I don't know what what's you're suggesting about this. You see, the atmosphere has to be very pleasant. You see, right away when I'm saying boundaries, it sounds like a concentration camp. You can set boundaries and it's going to be fun. For Example, every child knows that you're not allowed to play with the switch of the light on Shabbat, yes? 
Yes. Why they don't oppose this one? This they accept, right? So again, kids, why don't they, why did they get into, where, where they get to a point that they don't like Shabbat? I'll tell you why. The one that is supposed to be authority, not acting like authority. And then he's asking his child, to prefer. Why didn't you? Why don't you pray? Why did you do this? But he went to shul already after Akira Torah. Kids will hate Shabbat. Kids will hate it if they see that something is not kosher. Don't try to force them to eat. Don't try to... Within the boundaries of Shabbat, leave them alone. Talk to them, lay with them. It's, it's a different thing. We're talking now about things which are fundamental things. You cannot be mechanech without a child knowing the parents is the authority. Impossible. So this was a shiur for the parents. Please be a parent. Your obligation for Hashem is, that's why he gave you a child. You have to be the authority, the decision maker for the kids. They cannot demand, they can ask, they can say yes, say no. They're not going to hate you. They're going to appreciate you. We were very limited. No, this one, no, that one, this one. Rabbi, today, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that was then, but today's world, the kids are very different. What? The kids the, are very, very different and the very difficult. Different. The you parents know? are different. The parents are different. I raised, you know, I raised... Um, my three girls differently than I'm raising my boys. And That's I see correct. the difference. I see the difference in, a, you know, with the kids that are, they have more hopes for this, you know, we're growing up this, uh, this age. This, you know, the influence they're getting, it's very different and difficult. Again, I didn't say it's easy. But when you show authority, they're not going to mess around with you. We show authority, but they still demand. As long as you're going to demand, I'm not even going to relate to you. Talk to the world. Just avoid them and ignore them? Ignore them. They say, in this house, nobody has no demands. Because my husband is very strict with them and he shows authority. But um, 
I don't know. I still see like they want more and more. And if you don't give it to them, they uh, they hate you for that. They're <laughs> they, not going to hate you. <laughs> in the beginning, they hate you. <laughs> They're not going to hate you. Why many mothers are saying that when, when Abba comes, chick chak the kids starting to behave. And with Ima Kaha, why is it? I don't know. Maybe you could answer that question for me because that's what happens to me. And in, in many homes. Because Abba comes as an authority. As a, you have nothing to say, okay? You're not in charge of it. I'm in charge. Yala, Habibi. And so... And the child understand this language very well. And they're more afraid of the Abba. Of course. Because he is the authority and he shows authority. Don't mess around with me. So how does the Ima have to be? Ima thinks my child will hate me. And I'm like, your, your child is not going to hate you. But they don't show themselves, you know, too much with the Abba. They only show their personality with the Ima. Yes, because you let it happen. I don't know how to not let it happen. They just, <laughs> they just like, uh, they're too... Okay. Maybe spoiled. I don't know. Okay. We'll continue tomorrow in the session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good Thank you, Rabbi. Everybody. Thank you.